Well, everyone, Final Fantasy XIV has been doing so well that you cannot, well, for some people, log in, but for a lot of other people, you can't even buy it. Yep, that is how well it has done. Uh, so the, you know, it's funny when you think about games that get pulled from sale. You've got, you know, Cyberpunk 2077. It all falls over. Big problem. Technical issues, etc., etc. You've got GTA Trilogy. Technical issues, big problem, clearly a rush job, blah, 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 total disgrace, released too early, gets pulled from sale because of accidentally having copyrighted material they didn't have permission for. Fantastic. Titanfall. Yep. Bunch of hacking, hacking and stuff to the point where they can't maintain their servers, uh, meaning that, um, yeah, well, it's being uh, it's being uh, de delisted. Decently soon after the whole, you know, the relisting in Steam. Yeah, they, re they relisted that game on Steam and then decided... Uh a little bit of support should do. A little bit of support did not do. And now it's uh, being removed again. So, great. Yeah. And uh, now... <laughs> the one that bucks the trend. Yes. Final Fantasy XIV. And Walker has done absurd. It's obscene. Obscene yes. numbers. Completely obscene. So, it's been pulled from sale because too many people are playing it. Now, the context here is And Walker released Early Access December 3rd. Full release December 7th. And uh, their official line has been substantial con congestion. Yep. Uh, that's true. Now, from my understanding, it's worse in the States. I believe so, yes. Believe so. Uh, certainly here, it's you know, it has consistently been a thorn in the side of all of us. Yeah, I mean, it is like, it at the minute for us, it's two to three hours uh, queue time during peak time. Yep. So anytime after noon, you try to play, you literally just have to go away for three hours. Oh. Yeah, and it, it used to be you could almost get, you know, kicked out of the queue every uh, 15, minutes you know, every 15 minutes or so. Yeah. Now, that problem has since been fixed, but, mm -hmm. I mean, hey, if you get booted from that queue, you need to be back in within minutes or your spot is lost. Yep. Uh, and this is obviously leading to a lot of people wanting to have a session of this game. They do the queue, you know, they have issues, maybe their internet drops, and, yeah, it's, you know, by no means ideal. Now, generally, we yeah. found that when you actually get into the game, it's nearly 100% perfect. Yeah, and that's the thing that's interesting to me specifically is that most MMO server problems you expect, or most online game server problems, means the whole experience is absolutely scuffed. Yeah. But they have just put such a strong wall for the queue. They're like, no, all of the problem happens before you get in game. So when you get in, the experience is perfect, which again kind of takes some of the edge off it, as opposed to when other games go live and are destroyed. Yeah, and they certainly have a plan to take even more of the edge off it. Yep. Which is which is the interesting thing. So we've had all these launch issues. Now, initially, they had given people uh, seven days of sub. Yep. They did have a bit of a party line about using a wired connection over wireless. And while it's no strange. doubt we would certainly agree with that, uh, in quite a few cases, uh, I don't I don't think the uh, the party li line there is uh, really in line with people's experience at all. Yeah, no, they, they have a particular blind spot when it comes to network stuff. But as we've actually found out now, they're actually letting that blind spot see things now, mm. thanks to players, and it's great. it's great. Yes, absolutely. So, more drastic measures then. What's actually happening? Well, over the next few days, they are temporarily suspending new sales of the game. <laughs> Sorry, can't buy it. Yep. Too, too good. So, the starter and complete editions will not be sold by retail partners or on any digital storefronts. Now, you will still be able to upgrade and buy expansions if you're an existing player, but it's really new people coming in, so they are suspending the free trial signups as well. And this is the sort of thing, this game's absolutely, it's at the top of its game, absolutely, yeah. and this is when they're having to suspend all these things. Now, it's one of those funny things, whenever a bit of scarcity happens, mm -hmm. usually that's done in an artificial way, yeah. and uh, sometimes it can be done artificially, and it actually does still drum up some hype. This is a funny thing where it's actually creating a scarcity, but it's not artificial. It's due to their server limitations. Yeah, it's, li it's literal scarcity. Yeah, so I wonder if there'll be, be a bit of a, a second wave whenever uh, they open this stuff up and uh, all these potential new people have, have heard all the Endwalker people evangelize. Yeah, I mean, like, c compare any of this communication to how anyone else would communicate. Like, I, anyone looking over the fence at this should see that this is the kind of developer that cares about you. It's wild. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it really is. So, they're not only doing this. There are more things. So, yeah, they are basically limiting their own growth for the sake of the current players. They are suspending their advertisements. Now, as some ones that are already booked may go through, but any new marketing or advertising is going to be stopped, which, once again, is 
pretty damn insane, and uh, I doubt they just get a full refund and all of that. They wouldn't. Because this is going to be with ad partners where, you know, the, the spend is being committed, right? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and how a lot of these contracts are drummed up. It's, it's a bit tricky. So that, uh, that again, is a, a really big hit, but they know that if somebody sees an ad, gets excited, and can't buy the game, that's going to be bad. Mm -hmm. So... That's how they've done things a bit in their end. But also, they're giving away millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars of revenue. <laughs> uh, so they've given away seven days of game time as an apology. Now they are giving away another 14 days. It's 21 days in total. Yeah, 21 days in total. So overall, three weeks of free game time, which lines up with the expected overall impact. Uh, now, we actually look at how much money this is. It's, it's a fair bit of money. So there's the census round by Lucky Bat Show in November, which was before Endwalker's launch. It showed that the game had 1.6 million active characters. Now, that was basically characters that were after the free trial. Yeah. People have got to remember, getting past the free trial means doing A Realm Reborn and its patch content and Heaven's Ward and its patch content, <laughs> which for many people is going to be a, it's over 100 hours for many people. Probably, yeah. Yeah, we're really 60 to 100, but it's, it's a lot of game, right? Yeah. Uh, so an old community poll was suggesting that about 20% of players have alt characters. So if you had 1.28 million people being in that, uh, you know, active end game player, yeah. bear in mind, a lot of inactive end game players mm. will be activated for a new expansion when they decide to yep. come back, especially for FF, which is more of a game where you can just, you know, go do the story, leave. Mm -hmm. So... If the monthly cost is 13 uh, bucks, three weeks is uh, 975. So they could just be, you know, directly giving away 12 and a half million dollars uh, in revenue. And they would have known that figure when they hit that button. Absolutely. Yeah. So it could be as high as 20 million with the additional line. Yeah. And I think that's being, uh, to me, I feel like that's conservative because I imagine it likely did, you know, probably all the existing and active players hop back in. So 20 million, 25 million, maybe hard to know. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's pretty incredible. It's um, now, there's, there's times that this has happened before. I remember Warlords of Draenor blew up. Blizzard <laughs> gave people game time. Yeah. Forget how much it was. It was not a Definitely wasn't amount. three weeks. Um, but it was certainly the sort of thing where one of the things people liked with Blizz is way back yeah. in the past, they would do a lot of that free game time yeah. stuff. And then yeah. that just sort of happened less and less over time. Yeah, it used um, to be the it used to be like the done thing across a lot of subscription services yeah. because they had respect for players. Even I remember World of Warcraft having long maintenances so they'd bump another day on. Although I don't know how many years ago that is now, but yeah, used to be the, used to be the case. So it's a very interesting situation. Mm -hmm. They've absolutely done the right thing by players, and this is what's going to mean success in the long run. Yep, and a good relationship with their customers. Absolutely. Now this is where I've got to hand off to you, Matt, because mm -hmm. um, today's very busy. I have an appointment to go to. So, Matt, take it away with everything else that's going on. Mm -hmm. I will. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I'll wait for you to leave. Everything else. The other thing that was about the uh, the server issue was that the error 2002 has been burned into people's retinas, burned into people's nightmares. Not quite as bad as Diablo's error 37, but kind of getting there, where it was at sort of intervals, you could be hit with this disconnection from the lobby server, which is what handles the queue. So then if that happened and you weren't back in, you were gone. But a lot of the problem was when 2002 happened, you would open another client because it, it would close your client before you were allowed to reconnect. So you'd open the client. Then if you failed to connect, that would have meant that enough time has passed that you've lost your queue. So error 2002 has been the bane of people trying to get into Endwalker. They were initially claiming, okay, it's just, you know, it's just internet problems. It's just, you know, use your wired connection, try a different ISP, stuff like that. Uh, you know, it's packet loss is causing the problem. Obviously, they didn't really talk about how the packet loss could be the server's been overloaded, the kind of DDoS effect, but there was another part that someone found it was uh, happening around 15 minutes. Every, like every 15 minutes, something would happen. So players tested and reported that there was clearly a bug somewhere in the code, and that actually allowed them to find it, and they'll be rolling that out in the next patch. So it's the idea of, <laughs> in the midst of trying to deal with all of this shit, the whole thing falling apart, all of these queues that they think are, they clearly think those queues are unacceptable. You kind of imagine how they'd have to explain that. Uh, we have to stop selling the game. Why? Players having a bad experience. Obviously, uh, Yoshi P, Naoki Yoshida, has the sway being on the board of directors and being in charge of their most profitable title. But at the same time, that would have been a hard sell. But they did it anyway. And in the midst of all that, they were talking about 2002. They've 
actually went and they saw the player reports. They investigated based on basically like there's no well there's no real way to report directly outside of forums. So they did see forum posts, Twitter posts, Reddit posts followed up and actually have announced that there is a fix to the problem coming in the next patch. The fact that they're communicating what they're doing here is what really excites me overall. Versus a lot of devs who kind of go, uh, we're working on it, don't worry. In this case, they said they actually talked about stuff that the community were talking about, which are the patch dates, because obviously, you know, they've finally designed this and Walker release two weeks, raid release two weeks, hard difficulty release, and some other content at the time. And people have been talking about delaying it. People have been talking about, well, are they going to delay the raid release because so many people aren't finished the, the story yet? Or are they going to delay the hard mode because people can't get the gear in time from the raid release? And they actually addressed all those up front saying, here's the reasons why we're not doing this, which kind of comes down to impacting long-term plans, long-term balance, but also inconveniencing players who are waiting on new content. But it was more the fact that, like, <laughs> the idea that... I Amidst all of this, they're apologizing. They're going, we're very, very sorry that we're going to release things as we originally planned because it's a slight inconvenience for you. So I thought that was very interesting. And the other thing is then that they are expanding the servers as soon as they possibly can, but it's going to take a few months. So they hope to have a roadmap by the end of January because it's the usual thing they explained before because they basically they had warned everyone that this was going to happen because they couldn't get the server stuff ready because literal physical scarcity is what caused the problems. They couldn't get the hardware with the unique configuration that they needed, even though they were willing to spend a lot more money than usual. The whole thing here is just, they're a class act. That's the way I'd have to describe it because, you know, the you compare this to how any other game runs it. The idea of them giving away like I say, somewhere between 12 and $20 million in revenue. Obviously, it's, you know, it's spread out to players. Very, like, not that many of them will really feel it because it's like a three weeks of sub, but it's just such, it's such a player experience first way of thinking. It's such a, the players will be happy, that's what matters first. That's what will get us the profit in the end. And clearly, that has worked so far for Final Fantasy fourteen. That has worked so far for Yoshida and his way of doing things i mean that's why they won best ongoing game they won best community support at the game awards i mean obviously uh angry fortnite fans aside <laughs> no one disagrees with it no one disagrees with them deserving it actually honestly more than deserving at this point because they've taken you know <laughs> the flavor of what happened at 1.0's release was just so bad and now they've went no we're going to treat players like players, not like not like consumers. We're going to treat them like actual paying customers. We're going to consider their needs first as opposed to treating them like wallets. We just dip our hands in every now and again. And that just has, I mean, so many people I speak to are just very happy to continue rolling the sub for that game, to buy stuff from microtransaction store, all that stuff just because the game is good and the developers very clearly care about them. And it's really sad to say, but that's a niche now. That's a niche nowadays. That's like a, a unique, interesting way to run your company. And I think, you know, FF14 went from the biggest failure Square Enix has ever seen to the, the most profitable game in the series. So to everyone else in the industry, realistically, this is how to address problems. This is what everyone should be doing. You respond to them quickly, you respond to them openly, and you respond to them generously. Because that's why players are going to be with you in six months. That's why they're going to be with you in a year. That's why they're going to be with you in three years, five years. Or in FF14's case, ten years. It's certainly some contrast to Cyberpunk, GTA, or Titanfall. All cases where you know the person who clicked the button to send that live. Or told someone to press that button. Didn't care about you as a person. As a player, they just thought of you as a number. It's a great, it's a great story for everyone to see. FF14 actually doing what we've wanted, but it's also funny. The game's so good you actually can't buy it, and 
in lieu of Michael closing because he's off on his journey. Uh, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next time.